Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Vex Remixed. My name is Nelson Everhart and I compose the music for this video game that came out oh 2004. And this video series is about uh, resurrecting some of this music which is some music that I kind of credit to uh, helping me find my voice and my sound and helped inform uh, some of my later games. If you're not familiar, uh, I write music for the video game Wizard 101 and Pirate 101 with King's Isle Entertainment, and I write music for a game called Crowfall from Artcraft Entertainment. But long before those games ever happened, there was this music. Vex soundtrack was really special to me. I really got to explore a cinematic orchestral style while adding in a lot of electronica elements, which was another interest of mine. This track was from what was the Desert World, and it seems to have been called Rib City, although why is lost in the mists of time i think the game went through a large upheaval where uh the the cohesive forest world and mountain world and water world got kind of broken up into different pieces and, and kind of glued together a little more ambiguously so the the music that i had kind of conceived of as okay well this is going to play next to that and it's going to go together got kind of jumbled up this track is one of my favorites from the desert world and it goes with the uh part of the uh, level that's that's apparently called dragon reach and in all the desert tunes i tried to feature a guitar the guitar sound that i used was from the korg triton and it was called alchemy guitar for the era it was a nice guitar sound and it had a pad layered in there as well i did do a lot of remixing doubled the alchemy guitar with the newer sound so anywhere where you see the word new at the beginning of the track that's a, a newer track um, I did dump a lot of the old Triton and Roland JV2080 and Elise SDM Pro external sound modules, dumped them all to audio, so I had a little more control over them. I've, I've tried not to completely reimagine the piece with new instruments. Uh, a lot of this, the original sounds are still there. I managed to go back in and find a lot of them. So what I'll do now is I'll play it through and I'll highlight some of the uh, MIDI and audio parts that you might be interested in seeing, and then we'll come back and talk about it. So the heart of this track was kind of the alchemy guitar that was coming from the Triton. I did convert it into audio and actually found that the, the pad sound that was mixed in with it was taking up a lot of room. So I did dial that down. You can hear the, the, the low kind of almost like synth strings uh, pad in the back there. Got to be a little thick and hard to roll out of some of the other parts. And I, there's other parts like when the bass clarinet comes in at the end that I wanted uh, to feature that a little bit more. I have added uh, to the original Alchemy guitar patch, I added an acoustic guitar from uh, Indigenous. I really find that I like finding small studios that make contact libraries, like smaller focus contact libraries. This is just acoustic guitars. When you already have a big library, you're just looking to fill in some smaller gaps. So this is the acoustic guitar collection, and then they had a little $10 upgrade uh, for the remix, where they have four different models of guitar, and you can really easily just double it so it'll, it adds another 
guitar in there. So it sounds like two players playing. This is a really inspiring instrument. When I was doing Pirate 101, uh, there was a particular tune that had a lot of kind of Spanish uh, flamenco flair. When I first bought this library, I just wrote. And it was really inspiring. And that's something as a composer, you know, you really like to get a sound that's just like, this is fun to play. It sounds good. You can do some neat things. You can explore with it. Uh, and, and it helps you write stuff. So here is the uh, alchemy guitar. I like that. I just want it to be a little more thicker and defined. Seeing as it's featured in, in a number of parts there. This is a, sorry, they should say new harp. It's a different sound. The harp I was using was on the JV2080. Not my fa not my favorite sound. It did certain things well, but it didn't sound real. And I kind of wanted this part to sound a little more real. Uh, I've got a couple pads going on, a nice drone. These are from Spectrosonics. And this is, I believe it's from the Distorted Reality Library. I use this a lot during that era and then kind of late 90s, they just had some really cool edgy. Edgy sounds that I really liked. And I just wanted this whole opening to be nice and mysterious. Uh, this, this sound, Dark Buzzword, this was a super creepy sound that I just wanted in every once in a while. Just a ghostly really tension filled I'm playing a bunch of uh, I think the parts that I'm playing are also really uh, yeah I can play here you can see here I'm experimenting with like minor seconds and major seconds and just trying to uh, get a lot of conflicting tonality together uh, Sanctus is kind of a more sort of monks chanting kind of pad uh, and then once everything gets going, uh, you'll notice this track is called Rob Bass. Rob is my brother. Uh, he was in town recently, and whenever we get together, we usually have a musical project going. So I was working on this, and I really thought a, a real bass would sound good, kind of getting thrown down here in the midst of all the other stuff. It was a little empty. Once I rolled, once I rolled the uh, pad out of the Alchemy guitar, then it... Uh, it sounded good for the other areas here. It, something just kind of got lost, so I thought having another kind of low, warm instrument in there would sound good. And this is kind of what the strings are doing later. This ominous is a patch from JB2080, the orchestral card. So see how it got lost a little bit in the other thing. So I did double that uh, string part down here with another low, with the newer uh, Symphobia low string sound. Just strengthening that part up in there. So now you can hear it better. My brother's a really good bass player. I told him to go a little crazier in this section when uh, the bass clarinet kind of comes in. Especially when the bass clarinet is kind of sitting on notes. So I definitely like what that new bass track brings in. Uh, these Rama chimes, this is a sound from the JV2080. It's a, on the world expansion card. So really a very uh, kind of Scooby-Doo mystery sound in there. So the old gongs from the JV2080, they're not bad. Uh, and you could do some rolls on them that sounded reasonable. I actually just picked up Cine Samples Cine Perk Library. 
which is a giant orchestral percussion library with some other things thrown in there too. And I was mostly playing around. I like I like these new gongs and tam tam sounds though. Just kind of have a lot of the room, you know. I really feel you really feel like you know what the room it looks like. That was recorded in then have a little, couple little effects like that uh and that brings us down here to the uh, dm pro this is an alesis drum module it's originally intended to be hooked up to electronic drum pads and then you could you know change the kit that you were using on it i just use it with the keyboard this kit is called smooth groove the hats are a little more real but the drums are definitely more uh, electronica and then to add to that i put a plug in i have called supercharger it's from Native Instruments, and this kind of, it's a nice kind of crunchy compression that starts to uh, sort of overdrive the sound, makes it sound a little more angry. All right, so here's the hats. And here's the kick and the snare through that supercharger. Change up some of the mix here. So dub and jungle were trend in the electronica style at the time. And, and I really like the energy that kind of a, a obviously edited and produced drum track could bring. So the soundtrack for Vex has a lot of that element where I have, you know, just something a little more cinematic going on. These, these strings kind of playing and a bass clarinet playing kind of juxtaposed with the electronic drum section. Uh, I also had a JV2080 kit called, man, this was a long time ago, <laughs> uh, Natural Kit. MIDI Channel 10 was the uh, rhythm channel on most uh, multi-timbral pieces of gear. So if you're going to program drum stuff, it was always on Channel 10. And I didn't feel like the Natural Kit was natural enough, uh, so I wound up replacing that uh, this part, which is just some kind of ride cymbal stuff and crash cymbals. the uh, Cinesample percussion temps. Really like the new uh, kind of intro that that gave it. This is everything together. So that feels pretty good. And then at the end, I wanted a little something new to kind of end this on a little bit of a question mark. This is from a company called Heaviosity. They produce the famous uh, Evolve series. And this gives you a lot of control uh, over the sounds. I tend to just sort of try and find what I'm looking for. And, and if it doesn't work, use another patch. But there's a heck of a lot of control built in that you could use if you're uh, not impatient like me. So this is just a riser at the end. And it was a little too long. So I've got the uh, volume automated here to just come up at the very end bit. which to me makes it feel uh, much more like a question. This is a... You know? This ominous string patch from the 2080 orchestral expansion card was really aggressive. And it needed to be because it's trying to play over top of this, uh, these electronic drum hits. And when I put it all together and got the mix where I wanted it here, it wasn't cutting it. So I added a couple layers of strings on top of it. I've got these guys, which are Mercado strings. And these that are Spiccato strings. For a little more of the definition. It doesn't sound, this doesn't sound that good on its own when you mix them with the other two tracks. I think it starts to flesh out. And then on top of all that, I wanted something a little fatter in the bass region. So he's, here's the synth bass. Gonna double on that figure. Um, I talk a lot in my videos about, you know, use a sound for what it's good at. Uh, this might be an exception to that rule. Uh, it's, it's a very kind of different. <laughs> 
It's kind of a different part, but it's supposed to be kind of ghostly and a little bit unnerving. I also have these little figures down here. It's kind of a counterpoint to that bass clarinet solo going on in here. <laughs> And then over here, we have the female Vox that pitch bend up. So again, I was using the sound not necessarily for something that was intended for, uh, but I wanted it to sound an, a little bit unnatural and not right. Doesn't sound too bad. So that's uh, this is from East West Quantum Leap Symphonic Orchestra, uh, the women's choir. And I also used a heck of a lot of uh, Voices of the Apocalypse, uh, which had angels and demons as uh, female and male choirs. So I, I did use that library a lot too. Hope this was interesting to anybody who's either a fan of the Vex soundtrack or maybe a fan of some of the newer stuff that I've been doing. This is definitely a lot of work to get uh, everything together and then you know and add something new on top of it to make it a little more interesting. But I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, if you have a favorite track from the game, let me know uh, what that is down below and I'll try and get to it. Yeah, and any just fans of the general game, if you want to talk about the game, you can do that below too. I played the game a lot when I was writing for it and still picture it in my mind as I'm, as I'm listening to the track. Uh, thanks to my brother Robin for providing the uh, live bass on there. And thanks for listening. See you in the next one.